All your bass Chris. Hello, all your bass Chris here, or his hands at least. In this video, I'm going to build a Mr. A full stack with case. This video is sponsored by mrfpga.co.uk and the intent of this video is to show you how to use the parts that they sell to create your very own fully kitted out Mr. I am slightly biased because uh, I purchased all my bits from mrfpga.co.uk. Before they asked me to do this video, I was a customer and a very satisfied one at that. So take of that at what you will, but I would recommend them uh, if, as a supplier, especially if you're in Europe or in the UK. But of course they do ship internationally so you can get your bits from anywhere. Uh, so link in the description. So if you want to build your own Mr. like this, the, the parts I've got here are all freely available from mrfpga.co.uk and the analog board and the cases were provided for the purpose of this video. Anyway, enjoy and I'll see you shortly. So, first things first, let's familiarise ourselves with the parts. I'm assuming that you've come here without knowing what anything is, so we'll go through the bits now. This is the DE10 Nano by Jurassic. A lovely bit of kit, and we already have a memory expansion, again, from mrfpga.co.uk, insert, inserted in here. That's a very simple process that literally slides on the pins, and it has to be facing that way. We also have put a little heat sink on just to keep things a little bit cooler. Here we have the USB hub board. This sits at the bottom of the stack and you use this to connect all your peripherals such as USB mice, USB drives, joysticks and whatnot. Also with the USB hub you get this little doodad here and the idea of this is you use this to connect the USB hub to the main Mr. board. So let's get started. We're not going to be using this for now, we'll put that aside. And we're not going to be using the D10 Nano for a moment because we're going to prepare our board for connection. To make your life a little bit easier, you'll need to use the four little spacers that are included in your package here. And then you need four of the slightly bigger spacers. We're simply going to take our big spacers and feed them through the screw holes on the board. And then we're going to screw them like so. Not too tight, just enough so you get a nice bite. Screwing them in, you can use your fingers for this. Be careful not to cross thread. By the way, if you are looking for different parts of the video, there will be timestamps below so you can jump to the part that you really, really need. Whoops. Curse these fat fingers of mine. There we go. The reason for me doing this will become apparent in a moment. This is going to save you a lot of heartache later on when you uh, come to put your bits together. So, as you can see now, we've got the USB hub set like a little card table. I'm gonna put it down flat. Do you remember this bit? This is what we use to connect the actual D10 nano board to the, the USB hub. Take your USB hub, uh, sorry, your D10 nano board here. We're looking for this slot here. Oh, sorry, other side. We are looking for this slot here, the micro USB. And as you'll see, this little thing slides neatly into that slot like that. Now on the bottom of the D10 Nano board, now we've got, we now have a little uh, four pin socket. That corresponds with the four pins that sit upright from your USB hub, just here. Okay. Now the idea is you literally just line up the two things, push them together ever so gently. You don't want to rush this. And that is the hub connected to the DET Nano. We'll put that down for now. Now while it's laying flat like this, I'm going to take the opportunity to screw in some, another set of the longer risers into the top of the board. These aren't the super, super long ones, but these will be included in your package. So you want to make sure these all line up nicely 
and then you go ahead and you screw them in. Okay, so now that's done. As you can see, we have our spacers screwed in. Again, not too tight. You don't want to flex the boards if you can help it, but just enough to stop anything popping out unexpectedly. Yeah, isn't that nice? Okay, so the final part of our little installation is this bad boy, the analog, sorry, digital I.O. board. This is a very simple installation yet again. It literally lines up on the top of the board, only goes on one way. And as you can see, it slots in really neatly. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. The pins on the bottom of the board line up with the pins on the DE10 Nano, here and here. You want to make sure those pins are securely connected, so lean in gently. Make sure that all the pins line up before you put any pressure on. This can be a little bit fiddly, so again, you need to take your time and be as gentle as possible, because you don't want to bend any of these pins. be a little bit fiddly so you just take your time and eventually you'll feel them start to slide in nicely there we go very satisfying when the two bits slot together there we go look at that so you know what I'm gonna say next don't you take another riser and screw it in to secure everything You'll have noticed that I haven't had to use any tools for any of this. No soldering, no screwdrivers or anything. I will need some screwdrivers in the next step, which we'll move on to now. Oh, one thing I did want to be wary of. Um, when I was putting the... Please be aware, one thing you have to be aware of when you're putting on the different I.O. boards is they do require different jumper configurations on the actual D10 Nano instead, uh, on the board itself. And I will put a little picture up showing what jumpers you need for the digital I.O. Okay, so now we've got a nice completed Mr. Stack. Everything's hooked up nicely and secure. What next? Well, that's it, you're done. Unless, of course, you want to add another case. Now, it just so happens that the lovely people at mrfpga.co.uk also uh, sell a range of really cute cases. Laser cut acrylic, um, they, and they look absolutely stunning. And uh, it just so happens that they've sent me one to build this one in. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a very nice translucent, translucent, translucent you know, see-through green colour. And you also get a little bag of bits, a little bag of bits like that, including feet and buttons. So, here's how you assemble the, the Mr. In its case. First of all, I turn it upside down. Make sure you've got your, uh, make sure you've got your risers on here at this point, otherwise you might damage the Mr. Just make sure it's all nice and straight and secure. They don't need to be ridiculously tight, the risers, just enough so it doesn't fall to pieces. Then you need to open your bag of bits. Jump my life. Now, you get these risers in each kit. Now, as I've already built my mister up, I'm not going to be using these, so I'm going to put these aside for now. I will, however, need these pretty screws. Okay, so I'm going to put these buttons aside for now. And, oh, I have, I've left the feet in. Let's get those feet out. Out come the feet. Lovely. Going to need these. There we go. Okie dokie. 
Let's have a look at these parts then. So here, this is without a doubt the top panel. We'll put that aside for now because we're doing that bit last. We're looking for the bottom panel. And how can you tell it's the bottom panel? Because it looks like the top panel, but it has some writing on. And in this case, it says mrfpga.co.uk 2021. And we also have some residue left over from some sticky stuff, which I'm going to get rid of once I've built the case because I'm going to have screw, I'm probably going to put fingerprints on it anyway. Right, so take this bottom plate, your misters upside down, bear that in mind. And what you do is you line it up I like this up. It doesn't really matter which way you flip this, but you really want the words out because you want people to know where this case came from because it's so lovely. Again, mrfpga.co.uk. Take one of the screws you get in the package and you literally just screw it into the riser. Do not screw this in too tight. While these cases are beautifully made, they are crackable if you put too much pressure on. You don't need too much pressure, you just really want to hold it together. Don't we all? Just hold it together, everyone. Keep holding it together. So that's uh, screw one, screw two, screw three. Going in as we speak. You'll see I'm just using this tiny little screwdriver. Don't use like a big torquey electric one or a wow stick because well, you might crack something and we don't want that. And in goes the last screw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and boop, there we go. Just tight enough to hold in place and nice and secure. There we go. Right, flip it over, reverse it, like Missy Elliott said. Uh, oh, hang on, I have forgotten a really important step, right? Put it back upside down. We haven't put the feet on. You want these feet, because it'll stop you scratching up wherever you put the mister on. These are little sticky feet, and you can put them anywhere you like. I'm gonna put them in the corner, because I'm an REM fan, and I like things in the corner under spotlights. Now, I haven't got my ruler out to measure these exactly, I'm eyeballing them for now. But you can do what you want with your build because where you stick your feet is really none of my business. But I'm putting them in the corners a little bit there. Give them a quick bup bup and a bit bup bup there to hold them down. Spin it round, let's give it a test. Is it wobbly? No, it seems all right. There we go. Lovely. This is where it gets complicated because the parts all correspond to particular sides of the mister. And we're gonna do the side panels first, I find. That's a little bit simpler. Still a bit stucky, stucky on the sticky. Let's yank these off. Oh dear. Sticky tissues, right, there we go. Uh, you can clean these off. Uh, I'm gonna do that once I've finished the mister build. So if you have a look here, we have on this particular panel, it says user IO, USB, USB, and USB. So we're looking for the side of the mister that has three USB ports and the user IO port, which looks like a USB port, but isn't. Are you confused yet? Okay. This is the side we want, because as you can see, that lines up nicely. Put your mister down on the table, feet on the bottom, and you take your piece and you slide it into the holes, slide it, it should be a nice fit, not too tight, but it should hold in place. There we go, so that's now there, like so. We now need to take the mister and flip it around to the other side. These bits are just held in place loosely for now, and we will secure them in a moment. So by process of elimination, I know this is now the other side of the mister, because it's long wave rather than top wave. And this one has the power switch on it. I imagine you can't see any of this because it's transparent, but. You know, things will all become clear. <laughs> so again, line up with the four tabs on the bottom, loosely place it in. Same sort of situation, this time with one of the end panels, as it were. So this one says Ethernet on it, uh, UART, USB and USB on the go. Well, we all know what an Ethernet port looks like, don't we? So, again, from the top, 
and these interlock like so. Again, don't worry if it flops a bit because this will all tighten up when you put the top panel on. And finally, last but by no means least, we have this one here. This one has audio in, optical out, DC 5 volt switch, a few other bits, Toslink, HDMI debug, and powered USB. Also has some vents for speed. Not for speed, for cooling, obviously. And again, we do the same here. We literally pinch it a bit, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. And these all just line up nicely, give them a bit of a, a little bit of a push, and they hold in place. And then you might need to secure this with your hands slightly while you bring the top panel around. And that goes on top there. But there's one more thing I have to do, and that is buttons. Buttons, buttons, buttons. So this is where it gets, this is the only tricky part of this entire build. You need to put a button, and you balance it, <laughs> oh dear, you balance it, oh, balance, you're not listening, balance it on. If it's going to be really awkward, you can flip it over and do the table top trick and try and hold it in place while you put it, oh, you see. If there's a sudden cut in this video now, you know that it's because it took me three and a half years to do this. I'm actually going to get this bit of tape here. I'm going to tape it over the top to hold those buttons in place while I flip it over. And hopefully it'll hold them in place while I... There we go. And now you literally line up the tabs again with the top of the board. You might have to wiggle it just a little bit. Then it'll snap into place. Oh, there we go. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Let's remove the tape from here. Make sure the buttons aren't fouling anything. There we go. Oh, oh no, oh no, disaster, disaster. And he said he couldn't do it. Right, so it's probably quite hard to see on the video here, but the bottom top, uh, the bottom plate and the uh, top plate, they snap onto the side plates using pre-cut tabs here. Now, it's a bit loose at the moment, so what you do is we need to tighten this down with a screwdriver, again, just loosey-goosey, you don't want to over-tighten these because that would be a disaster of epic proportions. And with the final screw, we have a complete Mister. This one with the analog, sorry, digital I.O. port. In a case, ready for go. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Let me tidy up a bit. What a scruff. And a big thanks to MrFPGA.co.uk for sponsoring this little video. And I'll see you in a little while.